Hello, my name is Edward and I'm part of the Kerith Church in Windsor, along with my wife Rachel and our two daughters, Bethany and Hannah. It is a great privilege to join with you online for Kerith Online Service today. It's one week to go until the big day, so I hope you are ready for Christmas. Men, I hope you've got your wives um, a gift ready for the big day. Actually, bit of a secret, don't tell anybody, but I haven't yet bought Rachel a present. Worse, I'm not quite sure what I should buy her, so I'm looking for your help. Please go to the chat, make some suggestions, some ideas of what I could buy her. I have a budget. It's quite a small budget, uh, although what do you buy somebody who has everything that she could possibly need? Well, that's Christmas and I hope you enjoy the build-up to it and enjoy the week ahead and the weekend when it arrives. But we're going to read today from Luke's Gospel. This is part of our series on the Holy Spirit, particularly in the birth narrative around uh, the Nativity and the birth of Jesus 2,000 years ago. And as I begin, may I ask you a question? In your life, I ask the same question of myself, in my life, are you relying on the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life, or are you relying on yourself? I was reminded of something that happened quite a number of years ago now. I was invited to play the organ at somebody's wedding. They chose a very beautiful and ancient church way in the middle of nowhere in an idyllic rural setting. And when I arrived on that Saturday at the wedding venue, I discovered that not only was the church ancient, but the organ was also ancient. And when I sat down to play the keyboard of the organ, I discovered that in order to get any sound out of it, there was a pedal right at the base of the organ. And I had to press the pedal with my foot to get some air through the pipes in order to get any sound out of the instrument. And so I sat there pumping this pedal and playing at the same time. Half an hour before the service began, as people were arriving, I was sat playing music and pumping this pedal for all I was worth. There were various hymns during the course of the service, and of course I had to continue playing at the end as people were leaving. By the end of the wedding, I was utterly exhausted. And I discovered that I had got muscles in my leg that I didn't even know existed. When the church warden arrived to check on everything and to lock up, I said to him, who plays the organ on a Sunday? Your poor church organist. He said, why? I said, well, this pedal that constantly has to be pumped in order to get a sound out of the instrument. He looked at me. He said, did you not plug it in? He took me round the back of the organ, showed me the plug, uh, flicked a switch as if by magic. All this air came through the pipes. If only I had known. Let me ask this question again. Are you relying on your own energy, resources, your own strength to live the Christian life? Or are you relying on the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit? With that in mind, we'll go to Luke chapter 1. They may be familiar words to you. Perhaps you have heard these read every Christmas during your life. But here we are, Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. And this is the story 
of the angel Gabriel appearing to Mary while she is in Nazareth. Verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a, a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. How will this be? since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to, be, to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. An amazing story. There is Mary minding her own business. The angel appears to her, gives the, her this incredible message. And her response is this. How will this be? I think that's a very reasonable question. She is not filled with unbelief. She does not disbelieve what the angel has said, and yet when she considers his message and his words, she asks the obvious question, how will this be? There are two important things to consider as we read this passage. The first one is concerning what we call the virgin birth. For 2,000 years, Christians have taught, have preached, have stated that we believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. And yet all of us know that that is not possible. If you've been to school, even if you haven't been to school, you know it is not possible for a woman to conceive a baby if she is a virgin and has never been with a man. And yet that is exactly the message that the angel Gabriel gave to Mary. No wonder she said, well, how can this be? It is impossible. In this life, there are some things that are unlikely, some things that are improbable, but there are also things that are downright impossible. And the virgin birth is impossible. The second thing is the incarnation. Again, for 2,000 years, the church has taught and preached and stated that the little child who was eventually laid in the manger in Bethlehem was none other than God himself in flesh. And the question arises, how can Almighty God, the creator and sustainer of the universe and all life, 
become a tiny baby in the womb of a young woman? And the answer is, it is not possible. It is impossible. And yet, Gabriel the angel clearly says to Mary that this is what will happen. And so she asks the question, okay, but how? How will this be? And the angel gives a very straightforward answer, the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, many things are impossible. The virgin birth is impossible. The incarnation is impossible. Many other things in your life and my life are impossible without the Holy Spirit. But with the Holy Spirit, all things are possible. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And when the Holy Spirit comes on a person, all things become possible. Think of your own life. Our own salvation is impossible. And yet with the Holy Spirit, it becomes possible. You cannot save yourself. I cannot save myself. It is impossible for my sins to be forgiven. It is impossible for me or for you to be made right with God. It is impossible for any of us to live such a godly, righteous life that we would be welcomed into a perfect heaven. And yet, with the Holy Spirit, it is possible. Nicodemus came to Jesus one night, and they had a conversation about Nicodemus' life and about salvation. And Jesus explained to him, it's the Holy Spirit. It's like the wind. You can't see the wind. You can't pin the wind down, but you can feel its effect. And so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And perhaps you are seeking for God today. You've tuned in to this online service from Kerith Church, and you are seeking God. You won't find him on your own. If you are relying on your own intellect, your own understanding, your own good works and religion and effort, you will never find God. But if you open your heart to the Holy Spirit to come and to reveal himself to you, you will discover that there is a great salvation that awaits you. For those of us who've become Christians and have experienced the Holy Spirit in our conversion, there's the whole issue now of becoming like Jesus. You know as well as I do that the moment we get saved, the moment we become a follower of Jesus, we are not instantly perfect. We become Righteous in God's eyes, that's called justification by faith. But having been saved and justified by faith, it does not make us perfect. We still fail. We still sin. We still have many, many issues. And yet the Bible promises us that God has already determined and predestined us to be conformed into the image of Jesus. God has already started a process whereby we become more and more like Jesus. We become more and more holy, more and increasingly righteous. And that's not something we can do by ourselves. Following lots of rules and regulations will never work. We can only become holy by allowing the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and to be led and guided and prompted and cleaned up gradually, incrementally, day by day by the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an example of how that works. Some time ago, I got into this pattern in my own prayer life 
of asking God to forgive me of any sins that I had committed that day or the previous day. And I don't know who taught me to do this or how I came by this, but the general pattern that I would follow was I would say, Lord, forgive me for my sins in thought and word in deed. Things that I've done intentionally, things that I have done unintentionally, maybe things that I should have done and haven't done, and that's how I would pray. One day I was praying, and I said, Lord, forgive me for what I have done wrong in thought and word and deed. And a thought came into my mind, just seemingly from nowhere. And this was the thought. What thoughts? You're asking me to forgive you for the thoughts that you've had that are wrong. What thoughts? <laughs> I thought, well, I don't have any specific thoughts. And this thought came back to me. Well, how can I forgive you if you're not even confessing a specific thought? I thought, oh, okay. So I said, Holy Spirit, show me what things I have thought, what thoughts have gone through my mind that are sinful and displeasing to you. And immediately, in a nanosecond, the face of a man presented itself to me. Now, it's not somebody in the church, and you don't know who they are, but it is somebody in my life who, I have to be honest, I don't like. That may shock you, but it's the honest truth. He is irritating. He gets on my nerves. He undermines me, and I have a problem with him. I said, Lord, I don't want you to forgive him. I, uh, forgive me, rather, for thinking of him and lots of bad thoughts. Can we move on? But his face was there. And so I said, okay, Lord, forgive me for my bad attitude towards this man. That's how the Holy Spirit works. Little by little, incrementally, coming to us and highlighting to us, spotlighting to us those areas in our life that we need to change. <laughs> Let me encourage you. You are not the Holy Spirit. So you don't need to go around pointing out everybody else's faults and spotlighting everybody else's sins. Just work on yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to come and gradually, day by day, clean us up, make us more holy, change us until we become more like Jesus. And the other thing that the Holy Spirit wants to do in us is to enable us to serve him. Jesus said to his disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He talked about being filled with the Holy Spirit, about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That is all about an empowerment for service. When I was a young boy, we learned a little song that went something along the lines of, there is joy, joy, joy in serving Jesus. And as I look back, the lady who taught that song to us had a face like thunder and was utterly miserable. Joy in serving Jesus can be replaced by tiredness, weariness, frustration, even resentment. And that is not how we are to serve God. We are to serve God in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the work of the Holy Spirit in us to enable us to serve him in any capacity in life is so vital that Jesus said to his disciples, this is the great commission, go out into all the world and preach the gospel, but don't move or do anything until you have received the Holy Spirit. That is how important the Holy Spirit is. Well, Mary opened up her heart to the Holy Spirit. It changed her life. Christ was conceived within her. I encourage you today, open up your heart to the Holy Spirit and see what he will do in your life. An amazing thing happened. 
once Mary discovered that she was pregnant, she began to glorify God. And later on in Luke chapter 1, Mary opens her voice and she says, My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. And she goes on and on to prophesy about who this Saviour is and about all that God has done in her life and now is going to do through her life. This is the important thing about the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't just come to us to sort us out on the inside, although he certainly does that. But he then, having done that, begins to work through us. And he worked through Mary as she gave praise to God, as she prophesied a message from the Lord, as she proclaimed the gospel message from her own mouth. Sometimes we find praise difficult. On occasions it's easy, but sometimes it is really difficult. Well, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, praise just begins to flow from us. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we have a prophetic message to give. And when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, sharing our faith, sharing the good news of Jesus becomes so much easier. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. I can say in my own life that the Holy Spirit has changed me beyond all recognition. I became a Christian because the Holy Spirit came into my life, showed me how much I needed Jesus, filled me with his forgiveness and with his love, and changed me from the inside out. It is the Holy Spirit who has kept hold of me all my life. I cannot claim today to be the greatest Christian that's ever lived, but one thing I do know is that day by day, week in, month out, Year by year, the Holy Spirit has gradually worked in my life, changed me so that I become more, hopefully, like Jesus. And it is the Holy Spirit who has filled me and enabled me to serve him in so many different areas in life. Are you open to the Holy Spirit today as we approach this Christmas week, as we get ready to really think about what happened on that amazing night 2,000 years ago in the little town of Bethlehem. Is it just a story? Or will you allow the Holy Spirit to come to you? I would like to pray as I draw to a close today. And I'd like to pray for a number of things. For those who are watching this, you're joining us today, and you've never encountered the Holy Spirit. You don't know really what it's like to receive Christ as your Savior, to have your sins forgiven, and to come into a new relationship with God. I want to give you that opportunity, and we'll pray about that. Perhaps you've been a Christian a long time, but you recognize that you're not yet what you need to be and you perhaps are a bit disappointed that you're not as much like Jesus as you wish you were. I'm going to pray for you today that you would become increasingly aware of the Holy Spirit convicting you, challenging you, changing you on the inside. And the third category of people who perhaps feel that you are weary you're worn out. As we get to the end of this year, you're thinking, oh, thank goodness for the holidays. I'm so looking forward to flaking out because I'm so tired and so weary. Maybe there are things going on in your life and you need the energizing, dynamic power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. I'm going to pray for you. And so where you are right now, let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. And I pray today for those who are joining me on this online service, who have yet to encounter and experience Jesus as their Savior. 
I ask you wherever they are and wherever they are watching this, that you will come upon them now and open their eyes to see that Jesus loves them. He died on the cross for them. He rose again from the dead and he wants to come and save them in this moment. Holy Spirit, come. I pray for those who have been walking with you for many years and yet still feel that they are not good enough, they're not worthy enough, they're not holy enough. Holy Spirit, come, I pray, through your word, through your presence today and begin again the work of making us more like Jesus. For those who are weary and tired today, Spirit of God, come upon your people. Your burden is easy. Your yoke is light. And I pray, Spirit of God, fill us again today with the energizing, dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Mary said to the angel, I receive your message, but how will this be? The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come on you. My prayer for you today and in the week ahead leading up to Christmas, as you ask in your own life, how will this be? May the Holy Spirit come upon you and may you become the dynamic person that God wants you to be. Thank you for joining me today. It's been great to join with you on this online service. Enjoy the week ahead. Have a brilliant, superb time over Christmas, whatever you are doing. And may God bless you.